Wright the Challenger. He originally hails from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Now residing in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Weighing 219 pounds, Jimmy His opponent to my left, from London, England. Weighing 242 pounds, he is the Ring of Honor World Champion, Nigel McGuinness. It's a handshake to start the main event here in Nashville, Tennessee, as the Ring of Honor World title is on the line. Referee Todd Sinclair calls for the opening bell. Nigel McGuinness defending the world title against the former ECW heavyweight champion of the world, Jerry Lynn. Jerry Lynn may have won his fair share of championships several years ago in professional wrestling in other organizations, not Ring of Honor. And it is Nigel McGuinness who is the best wrestler in the world. He holds that championship. The Ring of Honor world title is around Nigel's waist right now. And Jerry Lynn not only has to prove that he's still got it, as the fans like to say, but needs to prove that he still is just as sharp of a professional wrestler here in 2008 as Nigel McGuinness, the best wrestler in the world, the world champion is here in the prime of his career. Well, I think Jerry Lynn has certainly shown the fans of Ring of Honor as well as Nigel McGuinness uh, that he more than just still has it, uh, as you like to put it. He came within a hair's breadth of defeating Nigel McGuinness in a non-title match back at Vendetta 2. And uh, he had Nigel beat last night in that tag team match in St. Louis. The referee was a little bit out of position, didn't see the pin attempt. But Nigel's shoulders were down for well more than three. But there was, unfortunately for Jerry Lynn, no official around to count that pinfall. Well, that's what it comes down to. The referee wasn't there to count. If the referee was counting, who knows? Maybe Nigel would have kicked out because he hears the referee slap the canvas two times. And he knows that he doesn't want to be pinned by Jerry Lynn, humiliated in a tag team setting. You never know what could have happened if the referee was in position last night. And I will point out, in that non-title matchup at Vendetta 2, Nigel did pull out the win. Even when the belt wasn't on the line, he still beat Jerry Lynn. So Lynn is the one that has something to prove in a matchup like this tonight. Hammer locked by Lynn as he repeatedly drove the knee into the elbow of Nigel McGuinness, who's able to make it to the ropes and force a break. Of course, Nigel McGuinness, an athlete who also likes to work over the arm of his opponent on occasion. He utilizes the Tower of London. and drops his opponent down very hard on their shoulder. Utilizes the London Dungeon submission hold as well. It is his specialty, focus on the shoulder and the arm of his opponents for that London Dungeon. This is that hammerlock divorce court to do damage to the arm. And right now is controlling the arm of Lin. He works his way back to his feet. Oh, Lin still showing flashes of the quickness. A trademark of his 20 year career here in pro wrestling. Is it just flashes of the quickness, or is it the same quickness that he had when he was ECW World Champion? Well, I don't think uh, anybody would say that anybody's the same inside the ring after a 20-year career as you were. Uh, but, you know, maybe not for the duration of a match can you go at the same kind of a pace, but certainly uh, you can pick your spots and show flashes of that brilliance from time to time. Uh, you just have to be wise in where you pick those spots and how you execute those maneuvers. 
And I think that's the part that comes with the experience of a Jerry Lynn is uh, you, don't, you don't have to do uh, everything you're capable of doing at all times at the same speed in a match. You pick your spots like he does right there with the head scissors taking McGinnis off his feet. And once again, Nigel in the ropes though to make sure that Jerry Lynn can't follow up and do anything else or go for a cover. Just sort of took Nigel off guard right there. Nigel swung that lariat. Lynn was able to avoid it and hit that head scissors. But Nigel's back to his feet as the champion, looking to set the pace of this matchup. Nigel backed into the corner, now comes out and drives the boot to the midsection, catches Lynn coming in. A hard forearm shot. As Lynn firing back, double thrust to the throat. And Lynn is face first in the corner, trying to catch his breath. He is in there with the champion and sends the challenger into the buckle. And then gets the boot up to the face, traps the head of McGinnis. Tornado DDT out of the corner. Quickly goes for the cover. Two. Gets himself a two count. He'll need to do a lot more than that to keep Nigel McGinnis down for a count of three. As Nigel is in the corner and the referee trying to get some space between the champion and the challenger. You know that these fans here in the Nashville area are behind Jerry Lynn as he has relocated from the Twin Cities down here. and does have that hometown support, his second hometown here in Nashville. Well, something tells me that if he was in the ring with Nigel McGuinness, it wouldn't matter where we were. He was going to have the support of the fans, not Nigel McGuinness. What if we were in London? You know, I don't even think too many people there like him anymore. Except for you, maybe. McGinnis has gotten sharper and sharper with every defense. Swings that lariat again, couldn't hit it. Oh, he caught Lynn charging. Used all that momentum against him and sent him flying between the ropes out to the floor. Well, Nigel wasn't about to get met with another head scissors like the first time that Lynn was able to avoid the lariat as he saw Lynn charging with momentum, just sidestepped him, sent him to the floor. And now it's the champion in control on the outside. And glaring right at that section of Jerry Lynn's supporters as he dishes out the punishment. Once again, calling himself the best wrestler in the world, and whether you like him or not, it's hard to argue that the man who is currently the world champion is not the best wrestler in the world. And I think at this point in the match, Jerry Lynn would probably agree as well as Nigel sends him shoulder first into the steel. Picking apart that body part. Nigel has a plan. It seems to be that he's going to go for that London Dungeon submission or maybe just driving him shoulder and face first to the canvas with the Tower of London. Nigel doesn't care what these fans think of him. He almost feeds off the negativity of the crowd. It makes him more determined to successfully retain the World Championship. Drags Lynn out of the corner. Drives him down to the canvas again, wrenching down on the wrist and the shoulder of Jerry Lynn. We've pointed out in recent defenses that Nigel McGuinness has had uh, that unlike most Ring of Honor World Champions in the history of this company, uh, rather than weakening as his title reign got more and more lengthy, uh, which we saw happen with Takeshi Morishima. We saw that happen with Brian Danielson, who had a bunch of time limit draws, was unable to put his opponent away within the 60-minute uh, span of time that he was allotted. Uh, he slowly weakened as a champion, did Danielson. But Nigel McGuinness is the opposite, and he gets stronger and stronger with every defense. And look at the pressure he's putting on the shoulder of Jerry Lynn right now. Lynn refusing to give it up here. Nigel putting all of his body weight against the shoulder and the wrist. A lot of pressure put on the muscle in the joint of Jerry Lynn, who rolls through. Turns McGinnis to his stomach, shoots the half, and gets a two count. But right back to work on that shoulder goes McGinnis. As soon as he gained control of the arm of Jerry Lynn, he sent him crashing right back down to the canvas. Again, Lynn trying to shake some feeling back into that arm. As Nigel has it trapped across the center rope. More pressure on the elbow and the shoulder of Jerry Lynn. He gets a warning from senior official Todd Sinclair. He has until five. I've heard that somewhere before. 
Layup up in the corner. Okay, these people care about you, pal. Nigel talking some garbage. European uppercut. He's a very confident world champion here tonight. He's beaten Lynn before and he can do it again. Lynn back to his feet. Irish whip out of the corner. Hits the buckles very hard. McGinnis with a cover, hooks the leg. Jerry instinctively, immediately gets that shoulder off the canvas. Michael continues to stalk the challenger in the corner. Drags him to the opposite corner. It's again, forearms right across the throat of Jerry Lynn. Nigel continues to draw with the fans here in Nashville as he is in command of the matchup. And then again, up to his feet in the corner. Nigel looking for some momentum. Charges. Spear out of the corner by Lynn. Well, all the momentum that Nigel had coming was used against him right there. The shoulder of Jerry Lynn driven right into the midsection. And Nigel went crashing down to the canvas. This is giving Jerry Lynn some time to try to regroup and catch his breath. Both men slow to get to their feet, and they're up at the same time. Forearm from Lynn, and another. Series of blows on McGinnis, who reverses the whip. Lynn hits the buckle, Nigel charges. Elevated by Lynn, lands on the apron, misses the lariat. Springboard drop kick, and McGinnis goes crashing out to the floor, bouncing off the timekeeper's table. I don't think Nigel saw that one coming. He meant nothing but wood on the way down. And Lynn looking to capitalize now. Nigel's trying to regain his bearings. I don't know if he knows. Lynn's up top. Connects with the crossbody. Cover. Only two. Didn't hook the leg. And McGinnis gets the shoulder up in time. Again, Lynn out to the outside looking to take another chance. All the way up top. One more time. Jerry Lynn, but Nigel's up. Takes away the balance. Tower London. Oh, this could be it right here. If he can hit it. And lands on his feet. Inverted DDT. Oh. Nigel with the shoulder up. Another two count for Jerry Lynn. As he's been able to withstand the early onslaught from the Ring of Honor World Champ and continue to fight back. O'Connor will blocked. Close line by McGinnis. The first lariat connects from McGinnis. But Lynn able to kick out. I think that's a little surprising to McGinnis. Nigel's utilized the Lariat so very effectively throughout his reign as world champion. Yeah, but that wasn't the jawbreaker Lariat, that extra momentum springing off the second rope. Perhaps it's that variation of the Lariat that Nigel needs to hit in order to pull home the victory tonight. He's got Jerry trapped. Trying to elevate him, but a nice reversal by Lynn. Air raid crash. One, two, three. Nigel with the shoulder up. Again, Nigel gets the shoulder up just in time. And the fans here so desperately want Jerry Lynn to realize his dream of once again becoming a world champion. And I think Jerry Lynn feels that he really has something to prove to the wrestling fans, to prove to the locker room. But so does Nigel. And that is, he deserves to be world champion. Another two count from McGinnis, kick to the back and a clothesline by the champ, gets him a two count. A trademark combination of Nigel McGinnis. And he has softened up that shoulder. He's focused on the arm of Jerry Lynn thus far in the matchup. And now he wants to do some more damage. Tower London to the floor, maybe. Oh, he's looking to finish Lynn off here. Now that's it! That is it! All Nigel needs to do is bring Jerry Lynn's lifeless body back inside the ring and go for a cover. Actually, all he needs to do is sit in the ring and perhaps collect the victory by count out. Well, that works too. You see, this is where the added 20 count to Ring of Honor competition comes in handy for the world champion. Jerry Lynn moving very, very slowly out on the floor. As referee Todd Sinclair continues to count. Just a few months ago, Nigel couldn't have retained the title in this fashion. 
And now he can just sit back and wait for Jerry Lynn, wait for Sinclair to get to a count of 20. And he's got this match won. He's at 14. They get 15 as Lynn is to his knees. 16 in the apron, and under the bottom rope at 17. Cover. Now too much time had passed between hitting that Tower London on the floor and going for the cover. Yeah, I think had Nigel brought him back into the ring immediately, this match may have already been over. But back to his feet is Jerry Lynn. Although with a little bit of help from McGinnis who places him up. Straddling the top rope. Getting him in position for another variation of the Lariat. He's up to the second rope is McGinnis. Lynn ducks the Lariat. Not that one, Northern Lariat connects. Still hung up in the ropes for another Tower of London here. Nails it. Okay, it's over now. That should be it for Jerry Lynn. McGinnis hooks the leg. No! Look at the expression on the face of the world champion. Not only did he hit a Tower of London to the floor, he also hits a second inside the ring and he kicks out. Nigel needs to stay focused. Don't let these Lynn supporters get in your head. Lynn back to his feet. Ducks the Lariat, waist lock. German suplex with a bridge. Only two. Hangs on the waist lock. Elbow from McGinnis off the ropes. Forearm, looking for the jawbreaker. No, Lynn off the ropes. Powerball. No. McGinnis took a chance and left his feet. And a great counter by Jerry Lynn turned into a power bomb for an earfall. But he only did get two. But now Nigel McGinnis has to dig down as Jerry Lynn's back out on the apron. Slowly making his way to the top. McGinnis back to his feet. He strikes first. He's got Jerry Lynn. We can see a superplex. Take away all the momentum that Lynn had behind him right there. Both men up top. Nails the superplex. Cover. One, two, two. And again, Jerry Lynn at two and a half, able to get the shoulder off the canvas. It was Lynn picking up the win last night in that tag team match, teaming with Brian Danielson in St. Louis as they took on McGinnis and Claudio Castagnoli. It was the cradle pile driver on double C by Jerry Lynn that earned his team the victory. Can he hit the cradle pile driver on McGinnis? Nigel trying to get that psychological advantage. Getting ahead of Jerry Lynn. Again, slapping him in the face. Tell him there's nothing left. McGinnis into the ropes. This press. Jerry Lynn's all fired up. McGinnis may have woken up Jerry Lynn here. Pulls line over the top to the floor goes McGinnis. He needs to pull himself back to his feet. Come on, Nigel. Watch out for Lynn. Lynn took out McGinnis, but he certainly absorbed an awful lot of the impact on that dive himself. Well, Nigel did his best to not only save himself from maximum damage being done as Lynn tried to wipe him out, but also do some damage to his opponent. And he did have Lynn stunned enough on the hard landing that Lynn took. He was able to drive Jerry's back into the edge of the ring frame right there. Oh, but Lynn gets the DDT. Great counter by Lynn on the floor. And Nigel McGinnis is bleeding from the nose. It could have been just from Jerry Lynn flying right at him. 
Nigel did his best to try to catch Jerry Lynn and drive him down like a power bomb on that dive attempt. But who knows, maybe one of Lynn's boots caught Nigel right in the nose. Nigel back to his feet. Jerry Lynn's already inside the ring waiting. Nigel might just take the count out loss. The title won't change hands on a count out. Oh, Jerry Lynn's gonna put a stop to it. Comes out and gets McGinnis. He's trying to drag him back to the ring. Well, Nigel's trying to fight him off like a coward. No, he's trying to retain his belt. And the count is broken by McGinnis being thrown back into the ring. European uppercut. Sunset bomb, cover! Oh! So close! The fans here in Nashville are on their feet. They thought they saw a new world champ. Todd Sinclair letting Jerry Lynn know he was just that close, but McGinnis got the shoulder off the canvas. And out to the floor once again goes Nigel McGinnis, taking advantage of the situation, grabbed hold of the tights, and drove Jerry Lynn into the steel. Oh, used Jerry Lynn's aggressiveness against him right there. But lured him out to the floor to put him in that position. Nigel's so smart. And now he's going to put this table to use. He's got Jerry Lynn trapped between the table and the guardrail. Time to incapacitate Jerry Lynn. Oh! Using that table as a weapon right into the midsection. There's nowhere for Jerry Lynn to go. Trying to free himself as that table continues to be driven right into his stomach. Forearm shots to the back. 16, Sinclair count. 17, Lynn is still stuck. Is he gonna beat the count? 19! Just beats the count! Oh, come on, that was 20! Todd Sinclair right there. Jerry Lynn just barely gets over the bottom rope at 19 and 5 eighths. What does Nigel have to do to retain the world title? Forearm shots from Lynn. Nigel hits the buckle. High back drop by Lynn. Burst of adrenaline here for Jerry. Hanging on to the ropes. Nigel's trying to bring him out of the corner. No! Crown power driver! No, 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 no! He knows it! We got a new tramp! kidding me ring positioning Nigel McGinnis got the boot across the bottom rope if Jerry Lynn would have pulled him to the center maybe he could have gotten the three but this match continues you can't get any closer than that you got to give McGinnis credit no I do a whole lot of credit chin breaker Nigel back to his feet single leg pickup step over to hold kick to the ropes Oh, they cracked heads. Nigel in the ropes. Jawbreaker, no. Right back up to his feet after Lynn hits the lariat of his own. TKO. And again, McGinnis just beats the count of three. Like I said earlier, he gets stronger and stronger with each defense. He continues to kick out no matter what Lynn throws at him. Cradle Pearl Driver again. Block it, block it. He's got him up. And he's in the center of the ring. Oh, Nigel kicks out of it. Double leg pickup. Shoulders down. He's got the ropes. There's the three counts. Here is your winner and still Ring of Honor World Champion, Nigel. Nigel McGinnis, still your world champion.